Also, mm. because it is a family that is split, uh, with particularly powerful voices on both sides. You, of course, would like to stay in. Well, you know, I've been working in this whole EU and environment for most of my life, and, and I want to get the message across. I've just set up with Barbara Young, Baroness Young of Old Scone, an organisation called Environmentalists for Europe, and it's really to get the message that, yes, of course, we're talking about economics, and people are talking about economics, but we say that there's some important issues as well, which the EU has brought to this mm -hmm. table, and that is the whole environmental policy. I've been involved in it for, oh, I just say 30 years, and we've got clean air, clean water, solid waste, you know, programs, and above all, from my point of view, nature protection. I've worked for years and years and years to try and get this organization, this whole network, Natura 2000 network, and it is in place, and it does give an extra layer of protection. So I want people to realize that there are many other issues to look at as well as the sheer economic issue. Yeah. To look at as well as the sheer economic issue. Yeah. But you do stand um, opposed to your own son. Now, when he said um, that he was going to be sort of representing the Brexit side, leaving the EU, were you surprised by that? Brexit. This is the ITV Brexit show. I mean, no, no, no. I was thinking about this. What, what do you mean this is the ITV <laughs> Brexit show? We've got you on here, Stanley, so yeah. we're not from no, no, no. We're very story. neutral. No, of course you're neutral. Um, I wasn't surprised by it. I wasn't surprised, but I worked... Obviously, I know, I've known Boris for years, as you could imagine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> good. But we overlapped in Brussels. I was working for the European Commission. He came as a journalist. So the idea that this Euroscepticism is a new thing... No, I, I think Boris has done a fantastic job. He has set the whole debate alight. Yes. It so happens I disagree with him on this environmental it, issue. It's interesting, isn't it? Because at the time when he first came out, there was lots of suggestions that perhaps he was doing it because down the line he would like to be the leader of the party. And you came out and said, actually, you think this could be a career-ending move for Boris? Well, I still think so. Do you? <laughs> I, I still think so. No, but listen... In to, what on the, way? On, well, on, the, on, on, on the substance. On the substance. I mean, he was, I think, generally committed to a, you know, a concern about the way... I mean, look at, look, at, look at the image he had the other day. You know, you're in a taxi driver, you've got a wonky sat-nav, the taxi driver doesn't speak English properly and he doesn't really know where he's going. There's some real concerns, but my issue has been we've got to stay within and we've got to fight within for change. And I think there are far too many good things which the EU has done to be cast lightly away. I'd like to see us stay in there. I'd like to see us win the battle on immigration. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see us do far more to say, look, this Eurozone project you know, has to be has to be undermined, strictly speaking. Mm. So that's that's where I that's where I differ from him. Yes, I accept a lot of his analysis, but I say no, it's much too serious an issue to just walk away from the EU table at this point. If you win the argument come June the twenty third, twenty fourth, and your son loses it. Is that the end of his political ambitions? I mean, you know, everybody believes that he wants to be Prime Minister. Look, I can't speak. I can't speak for Boris. You know, that is just not my, not my role. I mean, he's a multi-talented guy. I mean, he's a painter, he's a writer. I mean, Do you think he'd make a good Prime Minister? Who knows? <laughs> who knows? I personally You're think, his dad! Who knows? Who knows? You know, being a Prime Minister is, is, is just one job among, among many jobs people can do. You go up the political tree, other people go up the business tree, other people become musicians, painters. I regard being Prime Minister as just one job about, among many options. An important one, nonetheless. Important, but not the be-all and end-all, I can tell you that. Well, you ought to be able to walk away from the political career. Yeah, well, you might have to have that conversation with him if he finds himself in that situation. He's got plenty of but I would say that our job now is to make sure people go out, they register to vote, and these issues, and I, environmental issues, animal welfare issues, very much need to be treated mm. at an EU level, and it would be a big shame if we didn't carry that through. Did he, uh, did he ever brush his hair as a child? <laughs> Was that a battle your wife had with him on many occasions? Because yours looks very neat. <laughs> did he brush his hair? <laughs> well, I brush my hair. Yeah. I've we always wondered that. I fight with my children all the time to get them to brush their hair. It just looks like it's not something that's a priority. Yeah, and then they say, look at the Mayor of London. You've got, <laughs> yes, to, have, exactly. you've got to have hair to brush. <laughs> if he's got I can tell you that. <laughs> Stanley Johnson, thank you very much pleasure. for joining yeah, us this morning. My Thanks pleasure. for coming. Very good to see you. Uh, just coming up to 10 to 7, coming up, we have a sweet tribute to the comedy legend Victoria Wood. Have you seen it? <laughs> um, have you seen it on the trolley? <laughs> I sneak out somewhere. Give your point to it. Is it a sorbet?
They're good casters, aren't they? Yes, indeed. A tribute to Victoria will come up in just a moment for those who knew her best. Not really. Can you point to it? <laughs> yeah.